Good morning, fourth graders. This is Miss Ferguson, and it is Monday, May 11th, 2020. Today, we're going to be working on point of view, and we're going to be working on understanding how point of view affects the reader's understanding of a story. In a work of fiction, like we're going to be reading in The Hope Chest, the point of view determines what we, the reader, knows about the events of the plot and how we, the reader, should feel about those events. Basically, point of view is the lens that we are seeing the story through. The story is filtered through that storyteller, so the point of view helps us understand things in a different way. Your learning target is going to be, I can determine the point of view of a given text. Let's take a look at some of the examples we're going to be talking about today. First person, second person, and third person. For first person, we will be being introduced to first person, Frida. We have second person, Sam, and third person, Theodore. We're going to be focusing on this mini lesson on how pronouns help us understand the point of view. Think of yourself as a photographer, and those pronouns are going to be your focus. Keeping your focus on those pronouns is going to help you determine the point of view, which is going to help you understand what you're reading more deeply. So when we're talking about first person, and first person Frida is going to be helping us. First person is where the narrator speaks about himself or herself. And the narrator is usually also the main character. Some of the pronouns you're going to see that will help you know you're reading a first person point of view are I, me, my, mine, we, us, our, ours. Those pronouns indicate that this is written in first person. The narrator is speaking about himself or herself. Now, second person Sam will have different pronouns. In this point of view, the narrator is speaking directly to the reader. This is not used as much as other points of view. Some of the pronouns you would see for second person are you, your, yourself. Because, like I said, in this point of view, the narrator is speaking directly to you, the reader. Now for third person, Theodore will also have different pronouns because it's a very different point of view. In this case, the narrator is watching the story, but the narrator is not in the story. The narrator is speaking about other characters, but not about themselves. This is a very common point of view used in fiction. And some of the pronouns you would see are he, him, his, she, her, they, their, them. Just as photographers have procedures for capturing the best photo possible, procedures also exist for readers trying to determine the author's point of view. So we're going to follow this procedure to determine the author's point of view. And this is important because, like I said at the beginning of the lesson, understanding point of view helps us understand more about the plot and the events in the story and is going to help us think more deeply about what we are reading. So the first thing you need to do, of course, is read the passage. Next, what you're going to do is cross out the dialogue. 
Hmm, you might be thinking to yourself, what does dialogue mean? Maybe we haven't talked about it for a little while and you need a refresher. So that's a great question. There are two kinds of dialogue that we will be talking about. In one, a character talks out loud to another character. You see that dialogue as words written inside quotation marks. For example, you won't believe what happened to me last night, Andrea exclaimed. And you'll notice that that is written with quotation marks that shows me it is something she said. We also have dialogue where a character talks to himself. And this is called internal dialogue. You would usually see this written in italics. For example, Ugh, I just don't know what I should do, Bo thought. So he's saying it inside to himself. He's not saying it out loud to someone else, so we don't use quotation marks, but we do write it in italics to show that it is something he is saying to himself. So those are the two types of dialogue. So first you read the passage, next you're going to cross out your dialogue. So let's practice. Jose felt his stomach do a flip-flop. I think I want to go home, he said. Where would we cross out the dialogue here? We would cross out, I think I want to go home. It's been a long day, said Amy. She would be glad when the day was over. So what would we cross out here? You got it. It would be, it's been a long day, is what we would cross off. I was furious with my parents. I can't believe they are making me move and attend a new school. What's the dialogue here? This is trickier because this one doesn't have quotation marks. You got it. It would be, I can't believe they are making me move and attend a new school. It's in italics and not quotation marks because it is internal dialogue. I'm sorry, said Karen. I didn't mean to push you. She felt so embarrassed. So what would we cross out? We would cross out, I'm sorry, and I didn't mean to push you. So after you have read and then you have crossed out the dialogue, whether it's spoken or internal, there is one last thing you need to do to determine the point of view. You are going to focus in on the pronouns. So you've read, you've gotten rid of that dialogue. Now what's left are the pronouns. And you're going to reference either first, second, or third person in the pronouns you would read. We went over some examples, and you can always go back to the first slide. But for first person, you would hear pronouns like I, my, we, our, me, us. For second person, where the narrator is speaking directly to you, the reader, you would hear pronouns like you and your. And for third person, where the narrator is watching the story and telling it from the outside, you might hear. He, she, it, they, his, her, their. Those are some of the pronouns that you would encounter for each of those points of view. So, if you're unsure of the pronouns, after you read, you get rid of that dialogue. And you take a look at the pronouns that are there. And then you can reference the pronouns with the appropriate point of view. Understanding the point of view that an author is writing from helps us as readers understand more about the story. And it influences how we see and feel the story. So today we are starting the hope chest. You have in your packet your assignments for the week. So you will start today by beginning the hope chest. And that is listed in your packet with a checklist. So today you have to read chapter one, 
you need to answer the questions that go along with chapter one. And those are related to the point of view that we are working on, that strategy to help us be a better reader. Then you need to make sure that you log on to News ELA and complete today's article. And if you're behind on any articles, which quite a few people are, you need to make sure you get caught up on those today and submit the activities. Lastly, you need to do your daily 35 minimum minutes of reading and pick one of your daily prompts and record it in your log. Have a great day, girls. Tomorrow we'll be moving on to a new strategy and we'll be continuing to read the Hope Chest. Have a wonderful day.